Nine is not a great movie. Some of you might be like, I'm not surprised, Grace, either by the low RT score, the bad word of mouth, or maybe you just don't care for this franchise. I like this franchise, so I wasn't sure if the movie would actually be not great, because I was like, maybe people just don't understand the, the appeal of a popcorn summer movie. But now that I've seen it, I can tell you that, yes, it's not a great film, and it's certainly not the one of the best... Eh, maybe it's not. It's not one of the best Fast and Furious films, but it's not. It's in the. It's in the. It's in towards the front of the pack, I would say. And it's a fun film, especially when you see it in theaters. I think that's really important. And I would. I would highly recommend the IMAX package. I feel like I'm putting you in a new car. Speaking of cars, you want to get the IMAX package, which includes the exclusive Jurassic World Dominion five minute preview, which I will review here. Uh, no spoilers. Uh, well, maybe a slight spoiler, but don't worry, you'll still be able to enjoy it. Uh, I mean, I imagine I would have enjoyed this film a lot less if I hadn't seen it in a pre on a premium screen. In, 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 a, in a proper premium screen. Some IMAXs are baby IMAXs, which, but I mean, it will still have the Jurassic World Dominion trailer attached to it. So I would recommend seeing that, as, again, as, as, as a package. It's, it made for an enjoyable experience with all the other trailers. I did feel like I was back at the movies, which was great. And on that note, the best thing about going to see this movie was as I was leaving, there was a guy who'd gone alone to the film. When you go during the day in particular, there are a lot of people who go themselves. I often go to the movies myself. For press screenings, I always go alone. Uh, and he'd had such a good time, he clearly wanted to talk about it. And so on the escalator, when we were leaving, he said to me and my friend as he passed us, wasn't that great? And his... His enthusiasm just like totally made the experience for me, like just how happy he was. It was just a quick, brief thing. It was just really sweet. And that's something you can only get by going to the movies, that communal experience. Now, sometimes the communal experience is not so good. <laughs> in fact, during the trailers, some people were on their phones in front of me, one guy in particular. Even during the Jurassic World Dominion preview, I was like, how are you not watching this? Uh, but he wasn't, and I, I just, I really hate, I really can't stand it when people are on their phone. They'd even turn the lights down. Like, if it's during the trailers, I know I can't, like, really get upset because it's not the movie yet. But I do get upset, but I'm like, I'm like, okay, I guess to their, to their, in their defense, it's still trailers. It's really freaking rude. Please don't be on your phone. But anyway, he had it on during the Jurassic World Dominion trailer, but he had it off during the movie the whole time. For the whole time, he didn't get on the phone. Thank goodness. I guess the movie's got that going for it. I've been in movies where people go on their phone during it, and it is awful. I hate it so much. Uh, but anyway, you know, yes, there are those experiences, and uh, I was reminded of that as well. All right, let's talk first Jurassic World Dominion. I actually did not care for the Cretaceous scenes, to my surprise. It felt too much like watching a nature documentary, and not a particularly good one. I was like, okay, they're grazing, I get it. And hair and feathers everywhere, a lot actually. Maybe I felt in some ways too much. There was one, one dinosaur that looked like a chicken. <laughs> I was like, that really looks like a chicken, uh, and not in a cool way. I guess maybe a little bit, I was like, Chickens are related to dinosaurs, and, and I guess maybe they are, but that certainly makes them a little less cool. All right, so anyway, but then we jump to mo the modern day scenes with a clever tongue-in-cheek title card that I thought was funny. And those scenes were a lot more fun. Uh, there was one line, they're like, we have the animal in sight. They were chasing a dinosaur by helicopter, and I was like, that's cool. Uh, that reminds me a little bit of the theme park vibe, so I guess I like that. Dino animal, con dino control, it's called dino control. Uh, a job in Jurassic World. And it was scary to think what it would be like to share the earth with dinosaurs. Like, forget about maintaining property values. I mean, your house would just get continually damaged. I mean, we would, why would you ever, why would a business or anybody or a private person invest any money in their, their property because a dinosaur is just gonna come over? I mean, you could never insure it. Those are the things I think about. <laughs> All right, so anyway. Uh, the scenes, though, did feel a little bit like the scenes in Jurassic Park, The Lost World, which made me nervous because those scenes ended up not being particularly good. To be fair, though, no main cast members, really no cast members, it's all like extras, show up here. And I'm sure they're going to make a very big difference. I'm still very excited to see the movie. And again, the modern day shots I felt had potential. But the preview wasn't the slam dunk I had anticipated. I'm sure they'll release it online maybe this coming week. But... Uh, 
They had to have been able to cut together a better preview than that from what they have. I would hope. I mean, I can't believe they aired it for executives and they weren't like, oh, it's not a slam dunk. I mean, again, I feel a lot of times people who work at the studios don't, they, they don't like, their, they don't sample their own product. So they're like, it's got dinosaurs in it. People should be thrilled. And I'm like, Meh. but I'm curious. No spoilers though. If you've seen the Jurassic World Dominion five minute preview, what did you think? And if you want to put spoilers, just make sure you mark them. All right, F9, a lot of fun, but way too long, like so long. My friend got like super bored. Like, you know when you get bored and your head starts to like kind of drift to the side? I was like, are you okay? And she's like, yeah, this is boring. <laughs> I mean, she was having a good time, but like they just, they just, and a lot of it was talking that slowed it down. I'm like, whoever put so much dialogue in a Fast and Furious movie, it's ridiculous. They could have easily cut out an hour of this movie, which I think would have been 45 minutes maybe, which would have been all the talking scenes. And it would have been fine. So it was interesting. They played, speaking of trailers, they played a trailer in front of this movie for No Time to Die. And I was like, that movie took too long to come out. Um, but I was thinking that J uh, James Bond has a hard time competing with these new franchises like The Fast and Furious and Mission Impossible, which have borrowed very heavily from Bond, but make it more modern. So Bond's going to have to find a way to be like, I still think the, that I still think the path forward is casting Henry Cavill, but we'll see what they decide to do. All right, so anyway, to me, the first act of F9, the first third, was the best. But then again, they started to talk a lot, and my attention started to drift. I was like, it just, it was weird. I didn't even catch it happening until all of a sudden I was like, oh, hey, I don't know what's happening in the movie. Not because they didn't explain it, but I stopped paying attention. So that was weird. And then I had trouble getting back into it because I didn't know what was happening anymore. I'm curious if that happened to you. It's No Furious 7, my favorite in the franchise, directed by James Wan. No surprise. He's very talented. He's very good creative and business person. He's very good. Uh, but it's better, I thought it was better in the last Fast and Furious movie. And I still like this franchise. I didn't watch this franchise and go, you've run out of gas. I was like, it's just a slight wrong turn. Or maybe we should have taken a pit stop. This is just a little bit too long of a, tr of a road trip. And there is an end credit scene that sets up either F10 or maybe a spinoff, another spinoff. And I would watch either of those, to tell you the truth. I would. I would just be like, please don't make it this long. Uh, and I think one of the reasons it's too long is that it has too many characters in it. Although, I'm not sure who I'd cut because I really liked everyone. But I'm like, you just can't all be in this movie. I'm sorry. Maybe you should have more spinoffs because there's just not enough room anymore. You've hit maximum capacity for characters. But you know who, was, although, you know who I like best? It was a new character. <laughs> It was newcomer Vinnie Bennett who plays young Dominic Toretto. He's fantastic. I was like, there is a future movie star if he, if he, if he does things right. I really liked him. As soon as I saw him, I was like, who's this? Uh, and I love the flashbacks, which bring Fast and Furious back to basics. You know, refreshing for a franchise that's gotten so absurd. With Dom and Jacob's father, a race car driver, and them a part of his crew. I did feel bad that Mia was not a part of the flashback scenes. She's like, I remember when we had a brother, Jacob, that we've never discussed before. And I'm like, I didn't see you in the flashbacks. Why not? It was very annoying to me. But anyway, one foot in professional racing, one in street racing. It's a great setup. And it was like kind of like uh, a little, you know, it was a flashback. So it was a little dated and had a good, really cool feel to it. Those scenes had a great feel to it. It was a little like um, Ford v. Ferrari. That's what it reminded me of, like mixing Fast and Furious with Ford v. Ferrari. And I liked it a lot. Um, uh, Mary Poppins was in it. Uh, you know, for just a bit. And I would say this is a potential Fast and Furious prequel film or maybe even a prequel series on Peacock, which means nobody would watch it. Ah, uh, <laughs> But I think there's something here if another franchise doesn't snap up Bennett first. I liked him so much that if I ran a franchise or a studio, I would lock him up today. I would get on the phone with his agent and I would say I want to sign him. That's how much I liked him. As for Finn Cole as young Jacob, it was fine, but I'd love to know how Jacob gained like a foot on his brother, even though the last time they saw each other, they were both basically adults. I was like, John Cena is like a decent six inches taller than Vin Diesel, yet Finn Cole is like almost a foot shorter than Vinnie Bennett. So it was really jarring. But uh, John Cena, I have actually thought was surprisingly good here. I thought he wasn't very good in the latest Suicide Squad trailer. I was like, maybe John Cena can't act. But he restored my faith in him here. He was a very good villain. And I could see him. 
him being invisible has really gotten into my mind. So whenever I see him, I'm like, oh, I can't see you. It's fun. Although he'll have to fight Drax for who really is truly invisible. Because uh, he gets that joke all the time. Did he steal it from John Cena? Uh, but anyway, I thought John Cena was surprisingly good. He's got a really big head. In some shots, he reminded me a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger, which I think for John Cena, he's like, thank you. Uh, it's also good to see Charlize Theron and Helen Mirren back, although clearly both of them were just back for like a day or two of shooting. Like, if you know how movies are made, you're like, that was a quick paycheck for both of you, but it was well worth it. It was worth it for them, and it was worth it for the movie. They still haven't found a good replacement for Paul Walker. I can understand not wanting to replace him right away, but now that they've replaced Dwayne Johnson, I think it is time to bring in a new character to fill the void that Walker left behind, which you can still really feel. And because I was a little bored during some points of the movie, I started to think about it. And I was like, who would I cast? And I kind of liked the idea of Jack Quaid. I kind of liked him. I mean, he's not really the, the heartthrob like Paul Walker was, uh, but I think his comedic sensibility would fit really well with this cast. But I'm curious, who would you suggest? They could find someone new. They did a great job with Vinnie Bennett, so maybe there's somebody they could find. I also don't know how I feel, by the way, with pretending that his character, Brian O'Connor, is not only still alive, but still hangs out with them. I was like, that might be a step too far. I preferred it when he said goodbye and drove off into the sunset. That seemed to be, I think, more tasteful. The fact they're like, oh, hey, Brian's here, and then we cut to black, and you're just like, he's not here. All right, so anyway, it's great that Han is back. Although it's weird when Han's like, I'm not dead in a franchise where you can still very much feel Paul Walker missing. But anyway, Han is back, but he had very little to do, much to my disappointment. But what he did do was great. And I like um, Anna Sawai. I thought she was a great addition. I liked her a lot. And it was nice to see Fast and Furious get its own A-Force moment with her, Michelle Rodriguez, and Jordana Brewster all teaming up in Tokyo. Although there's a scene where Michelle Rodriguez and Jordana Brewster are supposed to be having some dinner together. And I think Jordana Brewster ate one lettuce leaf, but they were really like just moving their food around on the plate. And it really bothered me. I was like, you guys got to eat or you shouldn't be having a dinner scene. You could just be walking around or having a beverage. Like if you're not going to have, the, if you're not going to eat the food, don't put it in front of them. Uh, Natalie Emanuel is very good here too and has some really funny moments. She really held her on. Is the space scene too much? I actually did not think so. And it was fun to see them do a Back to the Future style car. I was like, that's pretty funny. Not to mention uh, soon, some commercial flights will actually be going into near space like that. So it's actually not that far-fetched. I mean, I don't know who would do it, but good luck to those who decide to, to be some of the first. This franchise at this point is about two things, family and spectacle. And this movie has both of those things in spades. It's, re it's just the real only real problem is it has too many characters and it has too much talking to make all those characters have enough dialogue and make them all make sense. They're like, oh, look who's here. Let's reminisce about how we know each other. I'm like, no, just keep going. Just wave and say hello and that's it. That's fine. We don't need to talk about it. Chris Morgan wrote F3 through 8 and then jumped to the Hobbs and Shaw movie. Maybe they should try to get him back to script the next one. But back to family, the heart of these movies continues to be Dom and Letty, and both Vin Diesel and Michelle Rodriguez do a fantastic job in what has become their signature roles. They're just a joy to watch on screen, and you really feel their connection. It's really beautiful. I still really, I don't think it's funny when Vin Diesel talks about family. And Vin Diesel, you know, he's the he's really good at emoting. You know, I felt, I felt the feels many times during this movie. Like when he was working on a car with his son, I thought that was beautiful. So I thought it worked. It was just too much. So that's my review of F9 uh, and the Jurassic World Dominion preview that's playing with it exclusively in IMAX. You have to go to the IMAX show to see that tr uh, five minute preview. Uh, so anyway, share your thoughts down below. This movie's doing very well this weekend. So we'll talk about that in Movie Math on Sunday, but I'm curious, what are, what's your impression of the film? Share those thoughts down below, subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now. 